Mary from the Tuesday Thursday section asked for a example of proving a tautology. So here's a quick example. Suppose you're wanted, suppose you were asked to pr prove the, this tautology. Not A implies A or B implies B. Right? And so we write this with just the single turnstile in front of it to indicate that it's a tautology. Now normally if you wanted to prove something, you'd write your premises and then you'd write a little Fitch bar, the horizontal line, and then you'd try to infer things. So what goes on before the single turnstile would get written above the Fitch bar. But in this case, we don't have anything before the single turnstile, so we don't have anything above the Fitch bar. We just draw a line and write 1. Uh, well, now we don't have anything to work with, so we're going to need to make additional assumptions. We're going to need to launch subproofs. In this case, it's pretty straightforward. The thing we are attempting to prove is a conditional statement, and that means that we can assume the antecedent here and then say that we want the consequent over here. So now we are beginning to have assumptions we can work with. Still, however, we can't do anything with not A. It's just sitting there all alone like it's at a party where it doesn't know anyone. So what can we do? Well, fortunately, our want line is still a conditional. So this gives suggests a natural strategy. We'll just assume the antecedent of this conditional and want the consequent, like that. Right? Now we've got two premises together that can work together. They can they can party. Right? So we say uh, we assume A or B, we want B. And this all works together perfectly, right? Because we can infer B from the two premises that we have. Um, not A and A or B work together to give us B. And that's um, Disjunction elimination, lines 1 and 2. And that's it. We've already gone from A or B to B. So we can pop out and write the conditional. A or B implies B. Conditional elimination, lines 2 and 3. And we've now gone from not A to this conditional. So um, we can pop out again and write the tautology that we wanted to prove. Not A implies a or B implies B, and that's conditional introduction, lines 1 through 4. So the basic lesson here is that if you don't have any premises, use subproofs. Create as many subproofs as you need in order to get the assumptions you need to actually infer something. And the other thing you have to remember whenever you are using subproofs is to always have an exit strategy. Here, when we launched this subproof, we knew we wanted B because we could have this exit line. A or B implies B. That was an exit line we wanted. Same with this one. This is an exit line that we want. So, use subproofs, have an exit strategy.